Welcome to The Advocates, where live thought-provoking topics are discussed with no holds barred here on PLUS TV Africa. We basically call it spade by its name. I am advocating today for the first change we must make in our mentality. We must move on from our savior mentality. Olari Raju is talking about business in the 21st century, and Helen talks on the vulnerability of parents. Sit back, and after this break, we would be back here to discuss it all. Stay tuned with us. The shifts we must make. Nigeria is on the cusp of a crisis, a kind that has never been experienced in its history, at least since I was born. Everything that can be wrong is wrong. And when you, when you think it can't be any worse, you receive a shocker. Just think of it. As is on strike, the power grid has collapsed for more than three days. Fuel scarcity is on for after two months. Police is about to go on strike, so I heard. Dollar rates is at its highest. Inflation is double digits. The prices of goods and services in the market are exorbitant. Airline prices have more than doubled. Diesel price has also more than doubled. Security is not any better. The list is endless. We can spend a whole day listing out all the country's woes and still won't exhaust them. As a forward-thinking Nigerian, I always ask myself, what can be done to change the current narrative? 2023 elections are around the corner. A lot of people expect it to be a reprieve. I doubt if that, if that would be the case, especially if we continue with the same mindset and patterns that cost us to elect our current set of leaders. So here, first, we must change these our savior mentality. We do not need a savior. I get it. We've been oppressed for too long. What oppression does to the mind is that it makes you feel helpless. That's what psychologists called he learned helplessness. Nigerians already have been conditioned to think that their deliverance will come from one person, a messiah. A savior. Our present experience should teach us otherwise. President Buhari rode on the mantra of change. The campaign positioned a former dictator as a savior of Nigeria. <laughs> the campaign mantra would, would, sorry, I missed that. Can I take that? Okay. The campaign mantra could not have come at a better time. Our savior mindset made us believe President Buhari would bring his magic wand and with some abracadabra, change the course of the nation. His magic wand has done the opposite of people's expectations. We need to change these thoughts. What we need are people with the right skills, intelligent level, passion, and have the country and its people at heart. So we need people and not just one person. These people need to be at all levels elected and appointed at all po leadership positions. So before we vote for a person in 2023, let's check out his or her tribe, because I believe these are the people that would form his or her cabinet. Let's go a little back in history. It took President Buhari about six months to appoint a cabinet in his first tenure. The members of his tribe that eventually became the ministers then and even now are people of, in my opinion, low pedigree intellectually. Unfortunately, they account for the majority of the people in his cabinet. This explains the situation of the nation and should serve as an example for us. Another mindset we need to change is this. We need to rethink, on the, rethink the conversation on zoning. Nigeria is literally and figuratively burning up at this point. And all some people think about is the zoning of the presidency. We have zoned this presidency since democracy and see where it has gotten us to. We've gotten the worst breed to become our leaders, all in the name of zoning. At this point, 
We should be having conversations on how we can rescue this nation before it's finally destroyed. We should be talking about the kind of leaders we want to, be, to elect in terms of their past achievements, their quality of experience, their patriotism, etc. The list is endless. Whether it's a male or a female, an hermaphrodite, a Yoruba, Igbo, Hausa, Tiv, Ishekiri, or any other tribe you can think of, we shouldn't be bothered by this. We are in a crisis at this point, and we need leaders that know how to manage a crisis. Those that can bring their grit and intelligence and also influence and everything that we need to steer the country in the right direction towards progress and development. In conclusion, I would say that we can't continue to live in our foolish ways or continue in our foolish ways by doing the same thing repeatedly and expecting a different result. We must make a shift in the way we elect leaders so that we can live better lives as Nigerians. So, what do you think, Clary? So, I quite <laughs> agree with you. I think um, today in Nigeria that we have, if you look at in American, people will wake up and say, God bless United States of America. If I ask you, have you ever stand up in the day and say, God bless Nigeria? I do. I pray for Nigeria so, self regularly. You see, we need to also, first of all, hold it dearly. We we'll talk about communism. You talk about first scarcity, you talk about uh, the ASO strike. There are some people profiting from it. Of course. So it, it, when, when you talk about capitalism system or government, sometimes it goes a long way, it works, right? But in our own settings, if we want to get it right, we need to hold it there. And if you know that every action you do is actually, is a, it has a pros and cons, it affects you either directly or indirectly, then you hold it there you take care of it. So it is that time when we live to that uh, uh, thinking level, mental level, then Nigeria can be get, great again, I believe. So what do you think, Helen? I have come to the conclusion that Nigerians, Nigeria's problem is the people. Of course. It's not about governance, it's the people. Mm. And the diversity of tribe and religion has made that gap wider we have to reorient ourselves towards each other as in really be your brother's keeper as opposed to looking at things for benefit for profit so i would not do something because i want to profit from you you wouldn't do something because you won't profit from me. and when each of us feel that we are being um under under is it under under quoted so to speak mm -hmm. we make sure that that thing does not work. work that's true make sure it does not work but you see what they fail to understand is that nigeria cannot grow as a nation unless we learn how to actually work with each other and it's the same everywhere. It's the same in my industry. It's the same in civil service. It's the same in schools. Everybody is you know, um, territorial. Mm -hmm. And they want, this is my empire, and you can't encroach. And if you're encroaching, it's on my terms. So at the end of the day, what happens? OK, leave him there. He can be building his own mansion. I'll do my own. I went for a conference in, um, in South Africa. It was only Nigeria that was on their own. Every other country came as a group, as a group wow. with wow. other team. This is my team. This is my team. Even within my own industry, I can tell you that I am the team leader. But to everybody else, I am just a team maker. So it is really about orientation. And really, if you, you have to be passionate about what you do. If you're not passionate about Nigeria, nothing else. Somebody asked me the other day, can I die for Nigeria? I said, well, if everybody in Nigeria was not here, I can die. <laughs> but as long as there are people, Nigerians in it, I'm so sorry, I can't. I, mean, I think that, that just takes us to the point where, I'm, I, where it's, it just shows that Nigerians themselves are selfish, self-centered. And the only thing that sort of brings us together is really when we are Profits. faced with profit or, it's or, or loss or loss exactly profit like this loss. current fuel crisis yeah. everybody's talking now mm -hmm. because it's affecting them i mean there are people that in the past have never 
had um, this light experience light crisis because they're living in serviced apartments. apartments. Now that diesel is so expensive. Exactly. Now can't. everybody's talking about mm -hmm. it. So I feel like we don't have to wait until we get to that point. We need to start having these kinds of conversations such that it will influence our 2023 elections or the kind of people that will select as leaders. But you also have to bear in mind is how do you select when nobody's coming out? And again, I think in addition to that, we also need to look into system. Practically, I can say the only uh, system in government that we have in Nigeria right now is financial system, like banking system. Yes. So if you look at it from that end, if one error leads from one account to another, you can actually trace can it. Trace it, yes. I don't say four doesn't happen. It does. Mm -hmm. But it is traceable mm -hmm. because there is a system mm -hmm. that can checkmate. But the, this infrastructure we have right now, when we take it to civil service, no, there is no system. Right. There is no system to checkmate activities of Mr. A and Mr. B. I was saying, like, let's say the Lekki toll gate, for example, when the toll fee was paid, we have cash point if you want to pay with cash. We have, if you want to pay with your card, or if you are prepared with a, a kind of a yeah, sensor mm -hmm. that you just put it in. It doesn't matter if you're a millionaire or you're a thousandaire or billionaire. So far, what you have at that point in time is cash. You have to go and queue mm -hmm. with the cash. That's mm -hmm. the system. Mm -hmm. So the system actually don't say, yeah, it profits me or not. Mm -hmm. It's a checkmate mm -hmm. to ensure that things work as expected. Mm -hmm. So I can t give you, for example, in Microsoft, if a staff of Microsoft, you don't actually need to be in office at all time. You have a gig to answer to. And once you meet up with the gig, the, your superior only have like 20 or 30 percent opinion on your promotion. Once you are meeting up with what you're expected to do, automatically you get promoted. So I think one of the major things that we should also be promoting is to build a sustainable system across all sector. Mm -hmm. With that, it helps us to see that uh, you, you, you are not more than me because the system actually gave the same rating, but irrespective of yeah. who you are. So let me just put some light on that. It still goes back to what they call a fidel system, whereby people are put where some people think they should be. Your ex, you need to be there. Your Y, you need to be there. I grew up in the North, and I looked at um, polygamy as a system that works. Because you find out that the man who has five wives, if he treats the five wives and have five children the same, love, is a different story, but they are treated equally. You have peace. But where you have a, 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 a you know, polygamous system whereby the father is quite happy to have the wives, you know, batter, batter, batter amongst themselves, you create animosity amongst the children. Mm -hmm. And it is the same thing with Nigerian governance. Our leaders are not capable of solving. Um, issues from each and every domain and that's why at the end of the day we are the children and that's why Nigeria continued deteriorating and deteriorating because our father did not set the foundation for peace I think I mean what I just hear everyone saying then is the fact that um, from your point there's a need for fairness which is what systems would actually create. If you have a solid, a solid judiciary system where everybody knows that if I am offended, I can always go to the courts and get some form of just justice for myself. But the, sorry, but to but the justice system now wants independence. But the, I, I, I don't. I don't. Independence is, is different. Yeah. Autonomy. Yeah. But exactly. It, do, it doesn't actually affect the content of, of what of they are expected to deliver. Yes. So it's, probably, uh, if you look at the independent in contents of uh, um, deliverables, it's. I, I, I also support them to be independent. Same. Because if you want to build a system and you have bureaucracy of signing, signing from one office to another, mm -hmm. you might see that you have a robust system you want to build, and it will take you ten years mm -hmm. to achieve the same robust system. Mm -hmm. So you have to represent it again because another set of government will come in again. Exactly. And stuff like that. 
I, so that, that's that's the challenge we are having because they might look at it in in, in preference to what is important to them mm -hmm, at that mm -hmm. time. which is where we are I, faced with yeah, right now i agree with you but i also disagree with you in the sense that all these independence institute or institutes are looking for it is so that they are less accountable financially. I, I doubt. I doubt independence would would. But would, there's high because, cor there's because, high corruption because in what, the court what system. Because what a system does is that it also builds accountability. But if you build the right system, it builds accountability. But judges are being bribed every day. It does. They're bribed now. They'll be bribed tomorrow. They'll be bribed so forever. Who takes them regardless, out? it's who a it's a matter of accountability. But who takes <laughs> them out? Who gives them the consequences? So I, I, I believe that should be another matter of discussion because when we want to look at it that way, we'll be looking at revamping the legislative arm um, to say the constitutional aspect, mm -hmm. and it, it's mm -hmm. going it's going to be a broad discussion mm -hmm. if you have to if you have to go into it. But by and large, it's, if you have a good system in place, it uh, and a good mindset, just like we say, which is bringing fairness mm -hmm. and a better understanding. Mm -hmm. so, you know, we need to be self-aware of what it's, it's obtainable. It's obtainable. Exactly. What the individuals can do, what the society is having that can give us in returns. So we need to be safe and aware of ourselves and our environment. Exactly. Then we we'll execute but it also, system of fairness. But it also goes back to the head of the house leadership. So, yes, yeah, I mean, leadership. Obviously. The country cannot, I mean, look at the Ukraine situation at the moment. Whether the president is right or wrong, is like I'm staying here. Mm -hmm. Do you think if Nigeria was bombed by <laughs> Russia, would different? you see any of our government officials here? It's a if they can <laughs> live for little things as throats, my throat is aching. That you can take lozenges, they fly themselves to wherever to get medical care. Do you think if there is a war, they will stay? I sincerely not. doubt so, it. I mean, the thing is that all from all the conversations I've heard, the, the goal is. Let's change our mentality. Let's change our mindset. Elect the right kind of leaders and build systems. Because I, I believe leadership would also build systems. So up next is Olari Waju. Stay tuned.